Okay, this presentation is uh, working with Wikiproject NRHP. Uh, NRHP stands for National Register of Historic Places. So this is uh, the project that uh, records and writes about uh, historic places, official historic places in the United States. Uh, you can see some of the things, type of things we work with. Um, there's a statue that's at Princeton University, a university building, a nice, uh, the first Catholic cathedral in the United States, some row houses in Baltimore, and a city hall out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, that's just a very minor part of uh, what sites might be available. There are things like ships and, and railway locomotives and all that type of thing. So it's a rather diverse uh, type of group here. Okay, um, how many people are interested in uh, Wiki, Love, Wiki Loves Monuments? Okay, this should be pretty uh, interesting for those people who want to do it in the U.S. version. Uh, basically, how do you find the monuments to take pictures of? Okay, and you do want to work with the project uh, if at all possible. Uh, there's lots of good advice that you can get. But first of all, what is the NRHP, National Register of Historic Places? Uh, this is the official uh, arm of the National Park Service that decides officially what's a historic place. Okay. Uh, we just kind of follow along with them, use their database. Uh, we recognize that there are historic places that are not officially historic, but uh, we pretty much stick with the... Uh, the menu that the government has given us, the National Park Service. Okay, so it lists these historic sites. Uh, there are these things called SHPOs, SHPOs, State Historic Preservation Organizations. Uh, the national group, the NRHP, yes, can you hear me? Or am I speaking too fast? Okay, uh, SHPO, State Historic Preservation Organization, this is part of your state government and they make recommendations to the NRHP to put them on this list. How many uh, items on the list? About 87,000 right now. Okay, and they add a few, uh, maybe a few dozen every week. Okay, so it's an endless task that we do. Um, now, if you're an NRHP listed site, uh, there's something still to as aspire to, and that would be to be a National Historic Landmark. These are the really famous places. Um, really famous places. Washington Monument is a uh, National Historic Landmark. The White House is a National Historic Monument. Those type of things. Uh, just within the area here, there are uh, probably a dozen within 10 blocks of this location right here that are on the National Register of Historic Places. Okay, now you'd think this whole list would be on a website. Well, they've got a website uh, I think if you look into it, you'll see that the government doesn't always have wonderful websites. It's reasonable, I guess. Uh, actually, Wikipedia's website is much better. My humble opinion, that is. Okay, so what do we have on the Wiki project? Uh, we have a bunch of tables. Uh, tables with 87,000 entries on them. Actually, a little bit more since we put it in different um, different categories. Our basic category, though, is the county category. Okay, so um, anybody here from Cook County, Illinois? Okay, if you want Cook County, Illinois, uh, you can find uh, a page that's actually several pages dedicated to Cook County and Chicago and Evanston and places outside of Chicago and Evanston. Okay, uh, if you're from Philadelphia, I know you're from Philadelphia, you can go to pages that are just uh, dedicated to Philadelphia County, uh, Pennsylvania. Okay, if you want to memorize something today, list of RHPs. RHPs stands for Registered Historic Places. If you go to our article on list of RHPs, you will get a whole list of states. And then you can go to the uh, state list. Oh, well, you could go directly to the state list uh, Pennsylvania's um, postal code is PA, so you could go list of RHPs and PA. Pretty easy to remember. And uh, from there, you can go right to the county list. Okay. Uh, so what do we do? We make lists. 
Uh, they're pretty well complete now, but people have to keep them up to date. Okay, uh, we write articles and we take pictures of these sites. Uh, somebody just told me we are up to 43% of the sites now have pictures. So that means 57% don't have pictures. Uh, and we're gonna, it's been going for at least five years now, the project. Uh, we're, we'll get there to 90% perhaps, uh, since they keep on adding them. Okay, and also it's a very friendly project. Uh, you want to uh, ask any questions, go to Wikitalk uh, NRHP and you'll get lots of nice answers. Let's see if I can go there. Okay, yeah, there's uh, what the site looks like and you can even read about this presentation. People have told me how to change the presentation around. Uh, they didn't tell me how to go backwards. <laughs> okay, uh, so the heart of the thing that you're looking for if you want to work with the project is these county lists. Okay, the county lists, uh, you can go there in several different ways. I think I explained you go to list of RHPs, which has a uh, better name than that, but uh, maybe National Register of Historic Places. Uh, this is the short, the short form. Okay, and then you can click down to the state list, then down to the county list. Places like Cook County or uh, Philadelphia or most big cities have subdivisions. Uh, so you can get right down to the list. Okay, or you could go to the county article. Okay, so if you're from uh, Prince George's County, which is right next door, uh, you could just uh, type in Prince George's County, Maryland. And under C also, uh, you'll see a list of National Register of Historic Places. Uh, let me say it correctly. <laughs> National Register of Historic Places listings in Prince George's County, under C also. Okay, <coughs> and so you can go right to those lists. Uh, that's what uh, uh, the state list looks like. Uh, this one, I think I'll be able to get back, so I'll, I'll risk it. I'll, I'll go to uh, show you what that county list looks like. Okay, we'll go. We'll start from here. I'm sorry for the uh, little illustration, but uh, I thought my Mac was going to be able to work today. Okay, basically what you'll get is a list of, in this case, I think it's 90 individual sites. Okay, there'll be article names here. Uh, there'll be pictures, which I'm assuming most people want to take pictures to start out. Okay, uh, there'll be an address. There'll be coordinates, um, what city it's in, and a brief description. Okay, so you can go to the article. Uh, some of them are red links, so you can write the article. That's a wonderful thing to do. That's a little bit hard right in the beginning. Taking pictures is easy, right? I think so, anyway. Um, you can click on the coordinates, and you'll go to a map in Google or um, Bing, your choice, and you'll get to look right down on it with satellite view, that type of thing, or street view. Sometimes you can get very good pictures uh, not pictures that you can put in Wikipedia, but very good pictures right from uh, Street View. Okay, and uh, the date that it was listed, that's not actually all that useful information for most people, I don't think, but it, it's helpful sometimes. Okay, um, the pictures. Um, there's one thing, this one's got what's called an address restricted uh, sign on it. Address restricted means Basically, we're talking about archaeological sites. Uh, the National Register of Historic Places wants to recognize these place, places. They just don't want to tell you where it is uh, so that you don't trample it and steal all the uh, stuff. Uh, so there are some th places that don't really get pictures. Uh, being a government agency, they mess this up. Uh, they put the address restricted restriction on lots of places where uh, you can just walk right in and you see the historical sign. And uh, so sometimes we actually do put pictures on address restricted sites, since everybody already knows what the address is. Uh, that's a little iffy. Uh, some people will get very mad at you if you put pictures on address restricted. But if you're sure that it's, uh, that everybody really knows where it is, put the picture in. Okay. Do you ever, oh, sure. Yeah, please, go ahead. Do you ever have to um, undo edits where people, um, in good faith, put the address of such sites on? 
Um, I think it's been done once or twice, but uh, certainly nothing very serious. It's more a question of um, how far you want to go. We actually have three things for this. One is you put in the address restricted sign when you know it's restricted, when you know it's um, sensitive. Okay? And then sometimes we put in uh, pictures where we know it's not sensitive. So for example, I give you an example of a bridge that was built in 1807 uh, that's got a, a nice little stream going on underneath it that you can canoe on and of course you can go on the road above it and it's been known where this place is since 1807 and for some reason they put a straight uh, dress restricted on it. Well, I took that picture and I'm not going to take it off no matter what anybody says, right? It's not uh, sensitive. The idea is about knowledge. Right. Yes, that's knowledge. Okay. Now, uh, there's a time when we don't put anything in there, and if we don't know whether it's uh, really sensitive or it's not sensitive, uh, we don't put anything there. Yeah, okay. You did have to get into arguments with well-meaning contributors. Uh, very seldom. Yeah. Okay. Very seldom. Yeah. Okay. And uh, we do have discussions about this. That's how the three different uh, uh, yeah. signs came out. So it's, we recognize it, but it's not hugely uh, difficult. Okay, more about the county lists. Uh, name, address, coordinates. The coordinates is, if you like wiki maps, uh, it's just a wonderful thing to find a place. Okay, uh, what I usually do is I print out, uh, print out the map so that you can find things. Uh, quite often I'll do like 10 sites in a day. You need to have uh, a map to tell you where to go. Uh, the government does make mistakes as far as these coordinates. Okay, so you might end up a hundred yards off. You got to look around. Uh, they, um, not so much they make mistakes as far as the addresses, but the addresses change. As the road names change or even the direction of the roads will change over 20 or 30 years. Okay, um, quite often I save them on my computer as PDF files. So if I'm driving her along in a car, I can take my computer with me and I've got all the individual little maps there. I don't even need to get onto wireless. Okay, uh, historic districts can be quite difficult to read. There'll be a description either in here or here, or both, under the address or the uh, description. Um, and trying to figure out what these descriptions mean from the official government uh, description can be quite difficult. But basically, uh, you go and you take the picture of the best looking building. That's what I do in anyway. Mm -hmm. Or the tallest building, or something along those lines. Yes, sir? Yeah. Well, one thing, I am lucky enough to live in upstate New York where I can look at the, the nomination form before yes. I go and see the exact boundaries so I know what pictures to take. Okay. By the, Daniel, right? Yeah, right? Daniel Case. Uh, he's, he's the real expert. He should be giving the talk here. Uh, <laughs> afterwards, talk to him. Okay. Um, Empty lots, four minutes, five minutes, okay. Empty lots. Uh, they tear down some of these places. It's a shame. It ought to be against the law, but it's not. Okay. Why do they tear down these places? Um, to list the places, to list the places, um, they don't want to take anybody's rights away. So buildings can burn down, floods can come along, landslides, uh, or they can just decide it's not profitable. Okay, so they tear them down. Uh, what we generally do is just take a picture of the empty lot. That lets the person who comes along next know that it hasn't, that the picture has been taken, but there's just nothing there. Okay, uh, let's see, what else can we do here? Oh, before we move beyond that, yes. of course there are archives of pictures of buildings that you can fill yeah. in and particularly in Philadelphia, there's a Philadelphia archive, and yeah. there are ways around that. There are ways around that, yeah. But, okay. But they've torn down buildings in Philadelphia for the convention center, I've got yeah. something that I have okay. to work with. I was going to give you the two-minute version of how to take photographs. Uh, I don't think I'll do that today. But uh, you can get good pictures, you can get lousy pictures. Basically, we want pictures that uh, show the overview, but you're allowed to do what you want. And don't be afraid, I haven't started uh, taking many photos yet, so I, I'm not able to do this. 
Anybody can do this. Daniel proves that, right? Um, no, actually, I started without really any experience in photographing, as you can tell by some of these photographs here. Um, okay, but sometimes you get the light just right, and anybody can take what I consider to be a beautiful photograph. Uh, I couldn't have taken a bad photograph of that, that building that day. Okay, I will suggest uh, that you edit. Okay, iPads have editing software built in. I can't hold the uh, camera straight for some reason. I always have to adjust the tilt a little bit and focus in a little bit, zoom in, whatever. Uh, that really helps. Uh, I think the biggest mistake I see in photographs is they're too dark. The sh things are hidden in the shadows. Well, you can take care of that with editing software pretty well. Yes, ma'am. Um, when you're taking these, you want pretty much factual um, photos as opposed to artistic photos? You know, most people take uh, factual reportage. But I think you should be able to do whatever you want. This is Wikipedia, right? Okay. Uh, if it gets too um, artistic, maybe people can't tell what's going on. But, nah. Try... Not that I'm an artist, but I, I know sometimes people like yeah. to do that. Though. Try both. My approach is it's a building's usually historic for its architecture. Take a, you know, a four, three quarter angle picture that will show the side and the front <laughs> if that's possible with a small building and you'll be able to show most of the architectural details. I, I will say my approach is take 10 different pictures, <laughs> upload one or two, uh, whichever ones look the best. Yeah. Yes, sir. Well, I have the impression that many people are worried when uh, people or too many people are on the pictures or we have, you have an old building and there's a row of cars parked in front of it but I always say that's great it belongs to the building it's part of the surrounding yeah and think about about a time over 10 years over 20 years it will be really really good to see the people in historical costumes old cars so <laughs> it was really yes. in addition to your picture and doesn't take any, away <coughs> Yeah, I try to avoid people myself, but um, if it's a city scene, <laughs> I try to avoid taking pictures of people. There we go. Um, if it's a city scene, you're going to get cars in it. It's part of the city. It's part of the site. Uh, but some people try to interpret it historically, so keep the cars out. Like keep a stadium. A stadium is supposed to be for people. People, yeah. So, you know, it's your opinion. It's This is Wikipedia. Come on. Okay. Yes, sir. It's been discussed. No, no, don't take pictures <laughs> through the window. Uh, there are privacy laws about that. Uh, there are no trespassing laws, which you should respect. But if you're in a public street and you take a picture, that should be fine with everybody. It depends on the country, right? It does depend it on the country. Fine. I, fine. <laughs> sometimes yeah. you get into the discussion with people and they ah. ask you, what are you doing? Yeah, I have asked a person, is this uh, your house? Is this such and such a place? and um, taking a picture, and he said, I didn't allow you to take a picture. Well, I was on public street, and he said, no, you can't do that. I said, okay, I'll erase it later, and of course I didn't. Um, <laughs> but in general, no. Uh, if you respect no trespassing, that type of thing. I'm rolling on much too long, I think. Uh, okay, one, one more question in the back. Yes, ma'am. Um, I just wanted to reiterate that if you're trying to get, take an architectural photo, the most important thing is to get the most architectural information possible. So actually the bottom one there is maybe five <coughs> too close. Um, if you can get a three-quarter view, you get two, two facades, the front and the side at the same time. If you're only going to upload one picture, try to get the most architectural information. That's also why you would try to avoid people because they're blocking something else that's yeah. between the photographer and the, the building. Ideally to go with your approach about taking 10 pictures, if I have the time and I'm going to create a category for the listing on Commons, I'll try, you know, I try to take pictures of this pop the front, the back, the sides, close-ups of any particular detail. That's what the architect, that's what architectural historians want. But, yeah. but it is historic. I, I really do think I ought to uh, close up here really quickly here. Um, you should get information about the site, hopefully, uh, before you take the picture of it. And here's another lousy picture of mine. Uh, this is vernacular frame dwelling, uh, which is like the strangest name on all of uh, the National Register of Historic Places because it 
encompasses about half the buildings in the United States. And it's a really boring place in Delaware, except I didn't read the, uh, the focus, the uh, nomination form, which if you go to this website, you can do that for about half the states. Uh, on the back part of this picture, there should be a nice Gothic window. Uh, I just didn't walk that far. Okay. Probably because it's their backyard. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that has something to do with it. Okay. Um, you can write away for these nomination forms by email. You can write away by snail mail. Uh, but you would hope that they would be on their website. That's only for about half the states. For the other half of the states, these SHPOs have their own websites. Some of them are very good. Some of them are not so good. Okay. Uh, does everybody know what HABS is? HABS is Historical American Building Survey. They've got some very nice pictures. Uh, they've got professionals taking these pictures, mostly in black and white. They also have very good data pages sometimes. 10%, uh, 20% of the time, they have data pages. Look for those data pages. To get a HABS page, uh, just Google HABS LOC for Library of Congress. Uh, you can get some good pictures, good data, uh, go to your local historic societies, your web pages, or just search the web. Uh, these are historic buildings. There's lots of information about them. And let's see, when you're on site, take a picture of the plaques. Yes. Okay, this means stop. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, it was an amazing presentation because in France we have exactly the same problems as you have <coughs> in US, so you are not alone. <laughs> uh, first, I would like to, to make a big disclaimer. Uh, this presentation uh, may hurt uh, some English native speakers, sorry. Uh, I think I have a lot of mistakes on my slide. <laughs> sorry for this. Um, uh, I, I have a question. Uh, regularly and I ask my grandmother if she, if she would like to contribute to Wikipedia. Uh, of course she would like because she is she is a biologist. Uh, she has worked a lot, long long time in a big university. She knows a lot of things but but there's many problems. Uh, on French Wikipedia we have uh, many things to, to change. Uh, my grandmother have a lot of questions and I think uh, on every Wikipedia Everywhere in the world, everybody has the same questions. Uh, what what will happen if I do something wrong? Uh, what what can I do on Wikipedia? So uh, we have to change Wikipedia. On French Wikipedia, we have started a big project about new users, how to welcome them, how to 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 help them to contrib to contribute. So the first thing we have to change is to explain to people how Wikipedia works. Uh, I think, I is there anybody here who doesn't know how Wikipedia works? No. <laughs> yeah, we have, we have to inform people. So we, we, we start a project in order to have on the website, uh, on the site notice, on the top of the website, uh, we can put some, informa some information there. That is uh, first uh, first draft of our project. Um, you imagine this on the, the the site notice. You have all your page there, and uh, we have uh, just a, a small sentence. It means it's in French. It means if Wikipedia is free, so I'm free to write any anything I want, everything I want. So then you have to click, and you have the answer. And the answer is really small. It explains that Wikipedia is free, but it's free as a free license, not as free, uh, um, you can do whatever you want. We try to, to we will put this online, online in during the month of October, and we hope to have some very good results and uh, have many people informed about uh, what we do. We have other questions about, uh, uh, can I sp speak about my rock band? Uh, can I speak about my grandmother, my dog, whatever? Uh, so. We try to have um, we, we, try, we try to to answer many questions in a few uh, in a few words. The second um, thing we try to do is to meet people because uh, when you are behind your screen, you you just uh, 
take messages, answer messages. Uh, we we try to make some meetings. Uh, where I come from, we are uh, about 10 Wikipedians. We meet every week. Then we have a lot of facilities in order to, to, to meet people. Uh, so we try to make some... Uh, some uh, uh, Sorry, my vocabulary is. <laughs> we we try we try to make some some uh, workshops in order to help people to contribute to Wikipedia. Uh, we do this every month. Then some people who start in one month can come to the next month uh, to have some other explanation, some other things. They also can have some documentation about how Wikipedia works. This is. Uh, it's a project of the foundation. It has been translated by Wikimedia France. And we have also some small cards with in 10 points how to contribute to Wikipedia. It's easy. You can put this in your pocket, give it to anybody you want. The second, um, second problem was how can I edit? Uh, we have a big problem on Wikipedia. It's, I think, uh, on a Wikipedia on every project is the, um, the wiki text and the wiki syntax. It's not really easy to understand uh, how to put something in italic, how to put something in bold, how to make a link. Uh, I, hope on the I hope the foundation will uh, release the um, visual editor very, very, very qu quickly. <laughs> but we try to change some small things in order to help uh, people. When you arrive on Wikipedia, now you have a personal message. And the personal, this message become by, starts by, hello, my name is Trizek, for example, and I'm here to help you. You can click here and you will send me a message if you have any, any uh, need. It, it looks like that, uh, that. So you have the, the presentation about, uh, I'm here to help you, Wikipedia, uh, five pillars, etc., and then uh, I'm ready to help you. There is an help book if you need, and there are so many links in order to to have uh, many as as information as you need. You can make uh, you can have your your own sandbox to make what you want, and then you can click on. Uh, on this link to have uh, uh, to start a discussion with this volunteer. So we start this with the old message. Uh, when we put the old message saying just hello, welcome to Wikipedia, uh, we have zero people uh, who, who start a discussion. Then with this uh, with this message, we have about five uh, five message per uh, volunteer each month. <coughs> about one per week. It's not a lot, but it's more than before. And uh, that's cool because people have many, many questions about Wikipedia. Why? How can I start my article? What? How can I provide some sources, etc., etc.? Uh, we change uh, the help page index because on French Wikipedia, it's a big, big, big uh, table with many, many, many links. So we make it uh, really much easier. It starts with a question, what would, you, what would you like to do on Wikipedia? And then you have some answers. I would like to read, I would like to edit, I would like to create, I would like to discuss. And when you click on something, you have uh, just a few, uh, few links uh, redirected to which redirect to uh, an help page. In two clicks, you manage to find your, to find your information. Uh, we have made some small um, pools in order to know if people like this system and they like it. So we are going to put it really online uh, instead of the big table for help page. Uh, the, f the fourth uh, point, very important, it's a place where people can have con uh, ask anything. We have the, the classical village pump on French Wikipedia, but when you are new, you come there, and it's really a strange place. So we start uh, a new place. It's a, the name in French is uh, Forum des Nouveaux. It's a place where you can just uh, ask for a question. Uh, we managed to uh, uh, give people an answer in less than five minutes. Uh, and then we can know what people need to know. 
So if we have, uh, for example, in one month, six uh, questions about the same thing, we know we don't have the good help page in order to help them. So we can change this page. And the last one is about edition. When people uh, make a contribution, he may do something wrong. So we try to change. <laughs> this is an example of an old template. This is just a template about uh, just a small vandalism. No, it's just, uh, it just about, no, your modification was not a good modification because it's not a wiki syntax. It's not a shape like it must be. So we try to change it because we need to improve that. So we have new messages. They are not uh, like robotic stuff. They are, it's a real message. Hello, my name is Tata. -ta. I'm, I'm a volunteer in order to help you. So you can, you can contact the people. You can have some more, more explanation about uh, what you have done wrong. We try to make it uh, easier, but automatically, because we have a lot of vandalism, we try to to send messages to every people. The last point is about tutoring. We have a big tutoring project on Wikipedia, but uh, many people don't manage to find tutor in order to help them. So we try to change it uh, because now, when you are new, you come to Wikipedia and you ask, uh, yeah, is there anybody who, who would like to be my tutor? And uh, most of the time, nobody answers. So we change the system, you have the tutors, people ready to help you, and then you just have to click in order to send him a message. Hey, would you like to help me? Uh, this is just a draft, we are going to make it uh, more real, but uh, it's a very, very big project because I think people need uh, really, they really need help. And if they can choose uh, their tutor on what, he likes, it's easier than to wait for a tutor. Look, all of these things are possible. Uh, it's really easy to, to put this uh, in production. That's what we have done. It just uh, on our project, we have merged three different projects, a help page, tutoring uh, project, a new user. And we have a new name, uh, and the name is uh, Project Help and Welcome People. So you have the link if you want to, 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 see, to have more details. I have made a special page in English, uh, especially for Wikimania if you need. <laughs> uh, we also have a great team. We are about 25 people, uh, really interesting. We have made uh, an online, uh, online um, big uh, appointment in order to speak you know, on IRC about uh, what we can do. We were about 40, so it's really, really good because uh, people, new uh, old contributors on Wikipedia uh, know that is really important and we have to change it because we lost so many contributors. We have to change it. So I'm very happy and they are really good people and it's really a, a, really a pleasant thing to work with them. So uh, my grandmother doesn't contribute yet because it's not really easy to, to come to Wikipedia. But with all the few changes we try to make, uh, I think she will manage. We, we have to change to wi Wikipedia because uh, we lose people. We don't have so many contributors. So we, we have to make things easily. Uh, we don't have to stay on where I'm on Wikipedia. But I know how it works, and I don't want to share it. That's not a good thing. And that our commitment is to change it. Thank you. <laughs> so maybe you have some questions before we, we change. Yes? Um, yeah. The, uh, the new users forum that you kind of yeah. of. Yes. It looks a lot like a thing on the English Wikipedia. Yeah, we know. <laughs> yeah. That's we, we, we have stolen the template, I know. <laughs> totally fine, of course. Um, but are the two projects like, communicating with each other at all? Like, are you guys sharing? Yeah, you know? no, and we, do, we don't share, uh, not, not for the moment, because we don't have uh, so many time. 
Uh, I have shown you many projects we have done, but it's only about 10% of what, what we try to do. We are 25 uh, working on this project, but it's not easy to, to share. But I think uh, we, have, we have to share. Yes. <coughs> yeah. I, uh, the wording of, your, of the, uh, warning, the, the new version of the template versus the regular section is that your... Which template? The one that had been had the little warning sign in it. And yeah. Yeah. And to try to make it friendlier, which it is friendlier, but I was thinking the wording it says, it says your modification to uh, that article has been reverted. Did anyone think of maybe personalizing it, saying, oh, we're sorry, but we had to do this, as maybe, you know, that might be even friendlier to the user? It just occurred to me while looking at it, that even the language is sort of impersonal. Uh, so, sorry, I, I didn't understand everything. So. <laughs> wording was sort of impersonal. It said your modification, your change to this article has been reverted. And I was wondering if when uh, that was rewritten, someone had considered using more personal languages to say, we're sorry, but we had to revert this. And yeah, that's, that, that's what we put, uh, we try to, to, to explain. We, uh, the complete message was, uh, hello, I'm very happy for your modification. You have done your, uh, a good job, but it's not perfect. And there is a problem. This problem is da 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 da, and you explain, and you you can have uh, a dialogue between the two people. So uh, it's not just a, a big, big place. It's not a big message. Uh, you have done something wrong, and it's wrong, and it's over. <laughs> no, we change that. <laughs> Thank you. I will, I will say that to the whole team. They will be very happy to, to know that. And a last one? Yes. It, it sounds like we should, if, if French Wikipedia is doing this project and German Wikipedia has the new user mentoring project and English Wikipedia does, we should hold like a contest to see, <laughs> who, can, to see who can retain and welcome the most new users. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe. So we, we welcome every user, so I think uh, yeah. <laughs> we are first. But uh, the most important is to share uh, our uh, experiences. That's why I come to Wikimania in order to make this presentation, because I would like to meet, meet some people uh, who, who know what to do, who want to, ref to have a reflection about it. Uh, we, we don't, I don't think we have a global place where we can speak all together about meta. this. Yeah, and Meta, or Meta, it, it really exists, Meta? <laughs> Yeah, we can do that. Uh, I think we, we have to, m maybe after Wikimania, we can make a, an official and big project in order to, to share. A, a wiki meta project. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, I'm, I'm with you all the way from Cape Town. Um, I'm a white African, so don't fall down in shock. Uh, I was born in Zimbabwe, and my passion and those of the people who work with me is Africa. Uh, can you hear me? Okay, good. All right, so um, what we're doing today is we, I'm part of um, a, a pan-African and actually a global um, project which is called Wiki Africa, and uh, what I'm asking today, no, don't go away, is oh, um, I don't know how it's ah, is Africa and Wikipedia, and we're speaking about a mutually beneficial partnership. So essentially, um, we work with. Um, creating and supporting the, the um, 
content on about Africa and that is related to Africa onto Wikipedia in all its forms. But because I'm, I speak English, and um, but also most so do a lot of people um, in half of the continent, that we have been concentrating partly, mostly on the on the English, but that is will change at the time. All right. So Wikipedia, the sum of human knowledge, or really is it? And I just want to say that I, uh, Jimmy Wales, kind of stole my front thunder a little bit today. <laughs> so excuse me if there's a little bit of a repetition going on here. Um, I'm not sure if you can see that. Can you see it? No. no. Can turn the lights off at the back? Maybe that will help. For a moment. And that as well. <laughs> turn that one off, this one. <laughs> Great. Right. So this is an amazing um, image that uh, Eric Zacht put together in May 2001. Essentially what it is is uh, the global distribution of 152,171 edits in English Wikipedia that was done in one day. And as you can see, there's lots of activity going on up there, but Africa is pretty dark. So, yeah, Africa is pretty dark. <laughs> so the question is, how can Wikipedia be truly global when 84% of the articles are written by people in the global north? So essentially, how can it have the, the sum of human knowledge when it has a, a lot of northern knowledge but not very m m much southern knowledge? Uh, just as an example, there are 7,800 7, articles from, um, this is from a sample of 1.5 million that are on Antarctica. And in the same sample, there wasn't, for each country in Africa, the total did not exceed the same amount for Antarctica. So a waste, so that an uninhabited continent has more articles than a con one country in Africa. And this is a slide um, that shows in, sorry, this is a slide that shows that the, la the 40, 24 of the 41 languages spoken in, Af in Africa with greater than one million speakers worldwide have fewer than 1,000 Wikipedia and articles. What's more, the content is hardly accessed. These pages only receive about 50 or so views per hour, which is vastly under the norm. And that's a sample of 24,660 articles done by the Oxford Institute, Internet Institute. Oh, sorry, wrong way. So, what do you think of when you think of Africa? Um, everybody has is influenced by all sorts of different things. Um, sorry. Do you think of a continent of one billion people, or a billion individuals of personal, cultural, and collective knowledge in one thousand languages in fifty-four countries? of innovation and art, of migration and riches, of one of the earliest civilizations, and one of the longest running universities in the world, under a siege. But if, mirror, if Wikipedia is a mirror in which Africa sees itself, then it is fractured, incomplete, and in some cases not existent, non-existent. As with most distorted reflections in the mirror, this not only this does basically nothing for the self-esteem of a billion Africans. Luckily, on the continent, and those of us all around the world, we know that this is not the way that we are. We know that there are six out of ten economies in Africa. There are six out of ten of the fastest-growing economies in the world come from Africa. The average GDP growth of countries in Africa is over 5%. There are 110 million internet users, which is up 2,357%. Uh, and uh, there's 65% six, penetration of mobile. In fact, it's the second largest mobile market in the world. Smartphones are selling com computers 4 to 1. 50% of all access to the internet is via um, mobile phone, and more than half of Africa's population is under 20. In fact, there are more mobile phones in Uganda than there are light bulbs. 
I reckon the torch must come very handy. <laughs> anyway, so what does this mean? What does Wikipedia mean to people in Africa? So we weren't exactly sure. So we asked 10 million people who form part of, a, of South Africa, admittedly it's South Africa's largest mobile social network, which is Mixit. We asked them, have you heard of Wikipedia? And thankfully, 69% had. We weren't sure that they would. This, um, this sample actually is a perfect fit for the whole demographic of South Africa. So it, it was pretty much on, on market. Um, yes, so 69% have, which I was hoping would be more. 45% of them were male, 55% were female. How often do you use Wikipedia? As you can see, there's quite a lot of people use it quite regularly, but 26% had not used Wikipedia, and some people, 10%, didn't know what Wikipedia was. Did you know you could edit Wikipedia? We were quite surprised by how high, perceived high this is, um, 57. But then, for those who actually had bothered, it was quite low. Only 21% said yes. So the demographic for this is 47% were aged between 18 and 24, 31 are aged between 15 and 17, 10% were aged 14 and younger, 10% were aged 25 to 34, and 3% accounted for 34 and up, for, for 34 years old and up. So this is Wiki Africa. It's a global, multi-layered project that works on encouraging and supporting the expansion and addition of content relating to and from the African continent. The problem that we found in Africa, apart from technological and other issues, is that there's there's no contribution, there's no culture of contribution to the internet. To many people, they have only started using the internet in the last two years, or in fact, some in some cases in the last year. And m the majority of that is through access to, to mobile phones. So um, just obviously, we're speaking in broad terms here. Um, so one of the ways that we do this is to, that we run the project is to harness, um, obviously, the power of Wikipedia, as it's our main aim, but also the power of technology to try and get people involved in, in contribution and to learn how to contribute. That's the page on Wikipedia. This is um, the African Incubator, and it seems that we all have been working along the same lines. Um, the African Incubator has been formulated um, based very much on the Russian Incubator um, to help people through just the first simple steps. We haven't got, to, and I'm, I will be stealing some of your um, fabulous ideas. You have, you <laughs> um, but we have a community from P of uh, Wikipedians across Africa who support and um, tutor people through through this um, project. And if you are in any way interested, please will you also come and help with um, new people adding African stubs and and developing their their content. Um, but the future is bright because, as we've seen, that mobile, we hope that the mobile editing platform, because the majority of people are using um, mobile as their internet access, that some of the apps that are going to come across for the mobile editing will really, really help to change this. Um, we're also looking at working with the social media mix it to also try and do that, and that bypasses a lot of the. Um, the smartphones as well. So there are other technological innovations that we can use. <coughs> um, and then the other aspect of the project, so that's for the individuals, and the other aspect of the project is um, the GLAMS project, which is Share Your Knowledge, which um, we've been working on to get the galleries, libraries, and archives and museums of Africa to sh contribute the knowledge that they already resides within their walls. We have a slightly different model for doing this in Africa um, because the, the vast majority of people cannot afford, there's no, not many social security situations where people can afford to take a sabbatical and uh, work on, on these kinds of projects. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're looking at a different model where we actually pay people to go and sit in institutions for a month or two months and get the systems in place. 
to help people to do it on a on a um, ongoing basis, and that's across Africa. Uh, we have, with the project, we've signed 17 institutions in Africa in the last year. 15 are poised about to sign um, the 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 things are going to uh, before the board. Um, and our partners in Italy uh, have signed up 45. Um, institutions in Europe to contribute their African um, collections as well. And it's only getting bigger and bigger. These are the list of the African-based um, GLAMs that we've been working with. And here are some of their logos. So Africa needs Wikipedia in order to make sure that its reality is reflected in, pos in the best way possible. Um, it's a receptacle for its knowledge. It's the, one of the easiest and the, the quickest access of, for people to actually be able to access their knowledge and change their reality and upload what they know to be true um, and endorse that. And then... Um, Yes. Sorry, it's also a, ba a way of building value, worth, and instilling confidence and pride in being a person within whose, whose knowledge is reflected. But why does Wikipedia need Africa? With half a million mobile and internet savvy children with the right programs and projects, we can potentially support half a, mi half a billion, sorry, yeah, half a billion users and a significant amount of editors over the next 20 years. So the half a billion children who are currently under the age of 20, over the next 10 years, they will be, could potentially be the future of Wikipedia, or at least be a significant part of it. Um, and with specific programs targeted at awareness, access, and contribution, the sum of human knowledge can be achieved. How many, how much, I don't know what I did for time. <laughs> Sorry. Ten Questions? Minutes. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Okay, somebody. I, I, I yes. I would like to ask you if um, you think it's more important, or equally important that you get all this knowledge that you don't get from all these uh, people in Africa into the English Wikipedia, or you were more aiming that they build their own Wikipedia in whatever language they speak? For Haley and French, not English. It doesn't, to us, it really doesn't matter what language they write in, as long as they contribute their knowledge. Um, it just ha so happens that for the moment, we have very limited resources. And um, so for the moment, it's, we target at the places that we know. We know that the Anglophone Africa, we have been targeting specifically the GLAMS projects. And we also know that we can work in the social, in the social media space to access that, and that is generally run in, a, in an English environment with people speaking their local languages. Well, so, sorry? My well, question is that if, if, you have, if you think you have to decide for one or the other, like, because if you, if you have it in Swahili, maybe the barrier, for example, in Swahili, it's very lower for people to contribute. Yeah. But then for English speaking people, all this knowledge will not be accessible. So. Well, for the, for the, uh, the way that the, um, the, uh, incubator has been set up currently is that you can actually write your article in Swahili or whichever in uh, Yoruba or Wolof or whatever language you want to but, and then once it's ready we can then translate transfer it onto the mainframe in that language um, but of course we the more people that we have coming onto the project and the more people we have coming into Wikipedia the more that that kind of the, that translation and automatic kind of um, sharing of knowledge around will also happen any other questions? Any questions? Um, the political situation in, some, in a number of is different across Africa, of yep. course. And, uh, 54, what, yeah. Yes. What, for instance, you know, it's one thing to talk about it, editing was in South <coughs> Africa, but you know, Equatorial Guinea, for instance, is the other end of the spectrum. Yep. And, uh, you know, what has, you, know, you said your sort of limited, your resources limited starting out. What, you know, has, has that, you know, affected what you do in any way? Or well, not, not really, because it, there are so. The reason why we don't limit it just to, to Africa is because Africans are truly 
you know, they migrate. So we have, as in Zimbabwe, for example, there are three million people living out of Zimbabwe who can and will contribute um, if, if we give them the right tools. So it doesn't matter where they contribute from, they could contribute potentially from Antarctica. But as long as they're contributing to, to building the knowledge that exists about their culture and their, their own lives, whether it's the little village they came from or whatever it is, or the big metropolis. To me. Hello. Hello. Um, congratulations, that was a beautiful slide. Thank you. Um, from South Africa as well, I'm quite interested in the project, as you know. A question for you. Mm. How do you deal with um, other NGOs that might be interested in helping, like your one laptop, one child? Uh, More the better. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the Wiki Africa project is rather a multi-layered one, and I can't really show you all of the things that we've been working with and working on. They're currently uh, the one child, one laptop, or even one teacher, one laptop program in Tanzania, I think it is, or Kenya. Um, that's very much, yes, I'm very, and um, other amazing uh, things like TESSA, which is a teacher resource for um, children, for teachers in East Africa. Um, those kind of things we we will be working with because we're we're launching a like a primary school project very quietly, but um, but but we will we I mean essentially the aim is to change the amount of information that's accessible to Africans and anybody wishing to access information about Africa. So we're not particularly precious about who who does this, as long as it happens and it goes and it's quite, you know as it's measurable and everything it goes on to Wikipedia. So the more the merrier, as you know. Yes. Yes, I'm also from, from, that, from that area. I, I would just like to add that um, <coughs> something is already happening because I, I just recently looked it up and, and in South Africa alone as a country, the Wiki Project South Africa lists some <coughs> almost 6,000 articles. And I know the Wiki Project Namibia lists almost 3,000 articles. Mm. So the comparison that you've made on the slide, I don't know how old the data is, uh, so we've already so far <coughs> and Africa by now, and and there's quite a, a lot going on in the north of Africa. So 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 something is happening. It's not it's it's not that we start from, from no zero. no of course, but it's it um that was that slide was actually done um I think it was April last year. So it's and it's taken from a sample of 1.5 million yeah, yeah. articles. So it's not it's not a quantifiable of all of the articles that exist on, on South Africa or Nigeria or whatever, but, but it does in that sample show. So, um, but yes, the thing is, that yes, things are happening and it's good, but I think that um, <coughs> the future is in trying to get more people contributing and people not being so scared of, of contributing. And if we can break down the barriers to people and if they want to do what what is good, you know what obviously there will be slightly different cultural um, imperatives so there might not there might be less articles on USB standards and much more on maybe textiles you know I don't know so it's something that we can all look forward to seeing so anybody else yes how do you deal with the problem of a lack of uh, reliable sources if you have a little town in America there's going to be census data on it a little town in Africa may not have any real source that it exists. But that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, uh, you know, the, it is one of the problems that, that exists with, within the Wikipedia kind of quite strict rules about citation. And it's not that the site, those rules shouldn't be there. Of course they should. But there should be also other ways of, of validation or other ways that, more, that uh, oral histories can be taken into account or mm -hmm. that... Uh, uh, yes, you know, uh, in, um, indigenous knowledge systems, and there are uh, there's a whole range of things that we need to embrace as we walk down this path. But essentially, s specifically, yes, it is something that I think Wikipedians will always have a problem with. I mean, we we put up um, a lot of artists from Africa that are very notable to us, and they get chucked off all the time. And it's you know they don't get chucked off; they just get. <laughs> You know, put up for deletion, and it's a difficult thing for us to 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 tell you that actually these people are very important. They're very important in the cultural sector of contemporary art. You know, yes. I I was I couldn't help but think as you were answering that question. I'm a genealogist by profession, mm -hmm. and um, as 
as we study, you know, oral culture <laughs> and, uh, um, of, of keeping genealogies in, in Africa and other places. When we think about it as Euros or as Americans, we always think of what we can document on paper that's been published as being the only valuable sources. But part of that is because we have such a weak oral culture. Mm. Um, they have such a strong oral culture. We have people who can, you know, recite genealogies for generations upon yeah. generations because they have a strong oral culture. So I think we, you know, when we go into other cultures, we need to rethink what is a reliable source. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yes, I agree. <laughs> anyone? Anyone else? A, a last, okay. last question. Comment. If Unless one of the problems that I that, that I see is I I'm a niche person. Uh, you work with uh, historical places. I work with birds. Mm -hmm. And the thousands, it, millions. And I, <laughs> come I over know, there. <laughs> I know. And the contributions from Africa are infinitesimally small. Yeah, we know. The, the, the tropical migrants that breed in Western Europe and on up to the Arctic, you find huge articles on and they spend their, mm. the non-breeding season in Africa and you read Nothing about it. Well, I mean, just as an example, the um, rock art, which is the first form of artistic expression known to man, really, there's a tiny little, for Southern Africa, of which there are hundreds of thousands of different sites, there's a three page, a, th a three line, just um, entry on it. Well, I mean, it's, you know, I mean, it's all up to us, but it's also up to Africans to take, you know, f for people to take ownership of their, of their heritage as well. So, I mean, it's, yes, it is up to all of us, and please do, and you're, you're all welcome. <laughs> Yes. That was the last comment. Let me make another last comment. Um, I, I encounter in, in, in my lectures, I lecture on Wikipedia to, to tertiary education students, and I encounter the following problem. At first, they don't know what an encyclopedia is because they haven't got any. Right? Mm -hmm. nobody, nobody ever owned one. And secondly, once you've told them you shouldn't write about you, you shouldn't write about your brother, you shouldn't write about your dog, uh, then they more or less automatically assume they shouldn't write about their traditional leaders, they shouldn't write about the king of the Piruku, they, they shouldn't write about uh, all that either, because one of them is their brother and, their sister <laughs> and, and all that. So now what I try to do, for instance, is I try to make, uh, sorry, I hope I don't get blocked, uh, I try to make templates full of red links. Uh, and, and then I try to tell them, look, all that doesn't exist yet. Do you know something about mm. it? Right? I know it's discouraged, but you see, it helps, it helps them if you tell them what a red link is and that it's actually the editorial decision <coughs> that such an article is wanted. And then they see a list of, of, of 35 of their traditional leaders in that template. And then they say, well, but they're all red. I say, yeah, write about them. Those are people you can write about. So, so we need to rethink not only, not only what is a reliable source, but also some other Wikipedia policies that, that do more harm than good in the, in the African context. And not necessarily in the, I mean, not just in the African context. It also the, applies uh, across. Yeah. As well, yeah. yeah. Hi, I'm Tiffany Smith. I think some of you have met me on the program here for the conference. So thank you all very much for presenting, and thank you all for attending, and for those that are coming soon. Um, I recognize there was an issue with this room, so hopefully you won't see me do this announcement again. Um, but um, that this is my voice. Um, panel that was supposed to be on stage actually was rearranged and there were some questions about when it was actually supposed to happen. We've rescheduled it for tomorrow, um, Friday, at 1.10, so right after lunch in room 307. Stephen and Mariana are amazing. I'm really excited about this session, so I hope you'll be able to join them and I think it'll be really great. So thank you all very, very much. Thank you. Thank you.